Welcome to our golden retriever tutorial. Uh, so we're going to start out with the eye. The first color I'm mixing is a reddish brown and I just need a base for the eye. Uh, I paint the entire eye with this light wash of color, blending it out at the bottom of the eye. If you look at the reference photo, you can actually see this as the white of the eye but it isn't truly white so i have a touch of color in that area next i am going to put the first layer down on the nose and i'm going to mix a similar color it's like this brownish burgundy so i take that brown and add a touch of red to it then i add this small amount of either purple or blue to kind of desaturate a little bit and I use this to block in the nose but avoiding the nostrils. The first layer of the tongue is going to be a much pinker tone and so a bright pink burgundy. So I mix the whatever red I have in with uh, purple and then you can use blue as well and you want to lay that down right onto the dry paper and in this video i'm actually going to introduce you to masking fluid and so masking fluid is essentially a liquid that you apply to the paper and it dries as a rubber protecting the white of the paper and it's pretty useful when you have complex shapes you'd like to preserve in white in situations which you would it would be basically difficult to paint around and so i use this masking fluid pen by opus art supplies i'll give you the link and i find this is the easiest option um, to use You've got a fine needle to apply the fluid with and i've used other brands and they have to be applied with a separate tool i'm going to apply this masking fluid to the bright white area of the eye and then the whiskers and some of the little hairs that surround the mouth uh, the base of the nose and the chin if you observe the reference photo you will notice that these white hairs sit on top of the black uh, skin of the dog and so by uh, preserving the white i hope to mimic the this detail and you always want to apply this to dry paper and always peel it off once the painting is fully dry um, and if you don't you risk ripping the paper when you peel it off up next you'll want to mix the black for the nostrils of the nose and so i block those in and then i move to the second layer of the eyes and and i make sure to keep the white area at the bottom of the eye preserved the second layer of the tongue i use a concentrated burgundy so red with a touch of purple or blue um, and adding less water to the mixture it will result in a darker color so i look at the reference photo pretty closely for this part and you can see that there's a fold in the tongue and i want to break this into sections to paint and so the first is the left underside of the fold and i go and i'll apply the color on top and blend out the bottom and the closer you get to the inside of the mouth the darker the tongue gets uh, because it's in shadow so when i paint the top of the tongue i'm careful to leave a highlight on the left which extends to the front of the tongue and i paint most of the tongue with a darker shade of burgundy except for the tip and I wash my brush and blend out the harsh lines so it transitions nicely between those two shades. And next, while the paint is still wet, I use my black to start shading the tongue, paying attention to the reference uh, photo as I paint halfway down the tongue and blending that out with a clean brush. And your, I use the concentrated burgundy to place a shadow on the underside of the tongue as well and it's just a line that extends to the tip and this helps define it a little bit more for the second layer of the nose i use black but i mixed in a little bit of reddish brown uh, and the base of the nose is very dark because it's in more in shadow um, 
So I start by applying a dark mixture, leaving a small highlight at the base of the nostril, and I block in both sides. And next, I mix my burgundy with some black. The top part of the nose isn't as dark, and so when you're painting it, you want to pay attention to where the brightest part of the nose is. You want to avoid painting that highlight and try to think about what shapes you see when you're analyzing the reference photo. The burgundy extends up the nose and blend out the edges with a clean brush. Now use the black paint to add some extra shadowing at the bottom of this top section and this helps transition from the black to burgundy to the highlight. And I decide that I've gone a bit too far so you can actually clean your brush and pick up some of the burgundy pigment uh, back up and exposing some of the highlight. The inside of the mouth is relatively simple. It's just uh, painted in a black. My only suggestion when painting this is paint the texture of the fur at the bottom, uh, especially where the black lip and the fur meets. And we're going to move over to mixing the fur colors. So I start out with mixing three shades to start. Now, you don't have to mix the exact colors I do, but it's important to have uh, varying shades. So the lightest base color I start out with is called Kronakern Gold, and which is essentially yellow with a touch of orange and brown, and it can replace raw sienna. And the middle shade is uh, made out of this gold color with a bit of red added to it. And the darkest shade is the this gold color base and then I add red, brown, and a touch of purple. And this basically results in a chocolate reddish brown. And as you begin to uh, add the first layer onto the dog, I advise you to have the reference photo in front of you at all times. Uh, I'm looking at it throughout the painting process and breaking down the shapes that I see, trying to replicate them. And I begin with the middle shade, uh, which I apply around the eyes, blending with a clean brush. I grab the lightest shade, which I'm going to use in to block in the fur on the entire dog. And I want to keep the outer edges of the fur unpainted to preserve the white. And this is fur that's being lit by the sun. And... The edges are uh, blended with a clean brush. And for this first layer, I don't really worry about laying the paint down in a specific way. I just simply, um, yeah, put down the paint. I leave the odd white highlight, uh, but mostly just lay the paint down pretty quickly. And as we layer, you'll notice I'll be bouncing around the painting uh, while the first layer is still wet. And I place the middle shade on the wet paint. This is called the wet on wet technique and it naturally blends itself, uh, that, like blends the paint together. So I'm looking at the reference photo to see where the fur is darkening. And so I apply the paint around the eyes, uh, the edges of the ear and the chest. The fur on the chest is the darkest because it's in shadow. And while painting, imagine the sunlight is hitting the dog from the left side down. And so knowing the direction of the sun can actually help better define the shadows in the painter's mind. And in my drawing stage, I drew some of the direction and the texture of the fur, uh, which helps me in the painting stage of the painting I am able to paint these dark shadows in the direction the fur is going. These shadows have one hard edge and the other side is a soft edge, which requires the blending of a clean brush. And you don't want all of the hard edges uh, because the dog will look too harsh, but softening all the edges will just result in a blurry dog without any definition. So you want to have a mix of both. And when you're painting the fur, pay attention to the shapes you see. It doesn't have to mimic every strand of fur. You just need enough detail to suggest the presence of a textured fur. So be patient with yourself 
in analyzing reference photos and translating what you see um, to paint really takes time. The shadowing around the nose is a cool gray color. Uh, so I mixed up a purple with some blue and you may have to add a touch of black to desaturate your color. I watered mine down quite a bit and applied this um, blending it into the top of the nose. Below the nose, I use this light shadow purple to start defining the area around the mouth. I didn't want to go straight black in case I messed up, so I used this lighter color to uh, help define it. And then if I did mess up, I could easily lift that purple color off with a paper towel. Black's a lot harder to lift off. And next, I'm going to go in with my darkest shade and start defining the shadows. Uh, and I'll start defining the shadows of the ears. I go along the underside of the fur. I previously drew blending that out. And where the ear touches the side of the head has a prominent shadow because the ear is casting um, shadows on the side of the face. So I begin extending the, those shapes down the chest, uh, keeping on, uh, keeping hard edges and uh, one soft edge. Then I move to the darks of the eyes. Next, I use the mid shade to define the muzzle and the nose, the eyebrows, and blending these hard edges. And at this point, I ran out of the mid and dark shades, so I mix up another batch, having the uh, swatch book can ensure I get the, a close match to these colors. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close. And this is the point of the painting where I was really paying attention to the reference photo. I would stand back and look at both the painting and the reference photo uh, and seeing the places I needed to darken even further. And I just kept building those layers up. Next, I began to add the strongest shadows along the ear, adding more details with uh, both the mid and the darkest shade. Those, uh, the nose area needs more attention, so I use the mixture of um, blue, purple, gray to start, filling in the area around the nose and the mouth. And once I'm happy with the placement, then I go on top with the black, and I'm leaving some of the areas unpainted um, because there are golden hairs that are sitting on top of the black skin that we're seeing. I'm going to uh, begin adding some shadowing to the dog now. And so I use the purple gray that I previously mixed up and I add some shadowing details to the dog. And I start with the around the nose and I work the shadows out from the muzzle, uh, blending the edges as I go. And I take what the same shadow color and I use it for um, around both eyes so for the side of the head where the ear is touching and I'm bouncing around to each area and I step back away from the painting and I look at the reference photo to basically assess where I think the shadows need to go and lastly I want to darken up the chest a final time with the shadow color as well. And I'm actually going to use a very light wash color, um, the color that I used for the fur to add to the teeth because they aren't actually true white. They've got kind of like an off-white tint to them. Uh, so I use just a diluted uh, fur color to add some uh, color into that area. And for the final details of the eyes, I'm going to use a dark brown or black to add a line under the eye to define it. And I also go ahead and peel off the masking fluid. This is at the point where I decided that the chest wasn't dark enough. Technically it's in the shadow and so it should be a touch darker than the head. So I continue to add some more purple shadowing uh, to the muzzle and the chest. And then I use a brown from my palette and I use it um, at a very light wash all over the chest. And I add a little red to that brown as well and add this to the chest ears and a little around the eyes. And that really just uh, makes it pop. I actually uh, started painting the background without recording, so my apologies. I uh, So the background was actually really fun and um, I mixed up two shades of green um, 
and it was kind of like a golden green and this really uh, dark kind of sap green and I also mixed up a touch of blue for the sky and a yellow orange for the grass area um, I could try to keep the application of the paint really loose and fun I just mimic where I see the colors from the reference photo and I apply it directly to the dry paper working kind of fast and spontaneous I basically lay down um, a section and then while it's still wet I apply uh, salt to that area just to create really some fun texture uh, the only thing is to be careful when you're painting around the dog you kind of want to take your time and I was amazed at how the painting took shape in this step like it really started to glow when I added the background which was really cool and then once the background is completely dry you want to rub off the salt and the masking fluid and uh, lastly I use my white gouache to clean up some of the details of the whiskers and the highlights of the eye and um, yeah and that was the final uh, final detail all right I hope you guys like this little uh, painting and I'll see you guys next time